It's Christmas in the 90s, and you find one of these under the Christmas tree. Well, you know it's not an NES game, and certainly can't be a Genesis game or a Super Nintendo game, so it must be something for your Game Boy. Even kind of sounds like it a little bit. If you had a Game Boy, and later in this video a Game Boy Color, in the 1990s here are just a couple of games you could have received for Christmas. So we're looking at the games that were released later in the year. Because if they came out earlier in the year, maybe you got them for your birthday. Not just saying that those earlier games you didn't get for Christmas, but you know what I mean. And we'll open this at the end of this video. We'll find out what I got. Now I said the 90s, but we're starting in 1989. That's when the Game Boy was released, and we had Castlevania Adventure released in December of 1989. Now when the Game Boy was first released, I was like, this is basically a portable NES. Yeah, it's in black and white or green and off green. And yes, the games do move a little bit slower because if they moved any faster, they'd be too blurry. You couldn't quite see them. It was a struggle for us handheld players back in the day, not just because we had to use batteries. These consoles weren't rechargeable or anything. But the technology at the time, there was ghosting, there was no backlighting, but we still made do with what we had because we wanted to play a portable version of Castlevania, which was a little different. The music Fantastic. It was like Castlevania music. Well, it is Castlevania music, but you know, like Castlevania music that we hadn't heard yet. And it was almost like you kept it like your little secret. It's like, haha, I'm playing something awesome that these other people who don't have a Game Boy don't even know. 1990 rolls around late in the year. You probably got Dr. Mario. I know I did. And why not? I mean, the console came with Tetris, so you already had Tetris, but another just kind of pick up and go, play as you will. The NES version was fantastic, and then the Game Boy version, well, it worked out just fine. So there's a very good chance that you also grabbed Dr. Mario. At least I hope you did. I'm also selfishly adding HAL Wrestling to this. Uh, this is from HAL America. These are, uh, well, HAL, you know HAL from uh, the Kirby series, The Adventures of Lolo. This game was made by Human, though, the makers of let's say, Fire Pro Wrestling. And although a simple wrestling game on the Game Boy worked out pretty well, and it had that same kind of Fire Pro thing, where you can't just button mash, you have to wait till you lock in your collar elbow tie up, and as soon as it's locked in, then you hit your button. And I just thought it was a fun game. But it was released late in 1990. 1991 was probably the best year for the classic Game Boy. We had games like Battletoads. And if you're a big fan of Battletoads like I was, you have a Game Boy version of Battletoads, which is different from the NES one, but plays so good. It's just a, it's just a fun, portable Battletoads game. It was also around this time we started getting other Final Fantasy games that weren't quite Final Fantasy, were they? We had Final Fantasy Adventure. This is the one I wanted because I was a huge fan of Final Fantasy but didn't like that whole turn-based style. So this one, more like Secret of Mana, um, you actually slash your sword to cause the damage. Of course, they put Final Fantasy on it to sell more copies, because, you know, at this time, nobody knew what Secret of Mana was yet. But what a great game. A game I hope you also got was Metroid 2. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've never actually beaten this Metroid. I really need to go through it. It's one of my backlog of, like, I need to just go through it sometime. Metroid 2, now on the Game Boy, gives it a new story, new look, new graphics. If you've never played Metroid 2, you'll notice it's uh, it's very similar to more like Super Metroid than it is the original Metroid, and that's a good thing. A lot of people love this game. I just need to play through it sometime. 91 also gave us Mega Man. We finally get a Mega Man game, the first of, what, five of the original Mega Man games for the Game Boy, and these came out in between the other games. So this first Mega Man game came out kind of between Mega Man 2 and 3. So there's like, you know, a couple of bosses from the first one, a couple of bosses from the second one, and then when Mega Man 2 rolls around, there's some bosses from 2, then there's some bosses from 3, and uh, it's it, it, <laughs> kind of hard to keep up a little bit. But we finally get a Mega Man game on Game Boy. And they're a little bit different from the NES ones. I mean, like, they're, they're kind of still their own thing, but still very Mega Man. We're still in 1991, still talking about these games that you could have got, and Ninja Gaiden Shadow came out. Not sure if you got this one for Christmas or not. It'd be cool if you did, because it was a Ninja Gaiden game that the, 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 it was never on the NES. Completely different. Well, I shouldn't say completely different, but very different from the NES one. It is its own game, and cool to see. In 1992, it was all about Mario Land 2. Now, Super Mario Land was a reasonable facsimile thereof of a Super Mario Brothers game. Super Mario Land, the first one, when the Game Boy launched, was more of a, hey, you've heard of this Mario game? Here, make a bootleg of it. And it plays like a bootleg version of Mario, even though it is a licensed Mario game. That makes sense? Not at all? Perfect. This one feels more like a Mario game. If Mario Wonder, that just came out for the Switch, was your first introduction to 2D Mario, then you're gonna love this game. You're gonna absolutely love this game. It's it's really, and people who grew up with like all the Mario games, this one is a lot, on a lot of people's lists of one of the better 
2D Mario games. It's just a game that not a lot of people talk about because it's on the classic Game Boy. But it's so fun and a little bit more adventurous. You get to go where you want to go. There's a couple of cool power-ups and, you know, things you can pick up too. It was the first introduction of Wario as the final villain. It's definitely worth checking out and maybe you got it for Christmas back in the day. Although the first Mega Man game came out a year earlier, uh, we're already up to Mega Man 3. And Mega Man 3 came out Christmas time of 92. And again, more of the Mega Man, but uh, like this one, Mega Man 3, you can charge your shot like you can in Mega Man 4. So, you know, like I said, it kind of like it takes a little bit of like whatever's around the area and, and, and goes from there. Gotta love the Mega Man games. Turtles 3 in 93 may have been under your tree. Well, that's a lot of ease. Uh, Turtles 3 for the Game Boy was cool because it was a Metroidvania style game. You play as Michelangelo at first, you can unlock the other people later. Eh, when I say unlock them, I mean you rescue them. And when you rescue them, then you can play as them too, and then they have their own abilities that the other ones don't have. Now, Michelangelo can kind of do this little hover thing with his nunchucks, but other people might have something that they can do that the other ones can't do, and yeah, super, super fun on this one. Okay, Mega Man 4, we're, we're already doing that, huh? <laughs> Wait, well, uh, if you were gonna release this game, man may as well release it during Christmas, so you have uh, more opportunities for people to buy it, I suppose. And Mega Man 4 rolls around, you're into the Mega Man games, yeah, why not grab Mega Man 4? 94 was also the time that we had the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers just came out on uh, TV, as your Saturday morning thing. Was it after school? No, I'm pretty sure it was Saturday morning for a while. At least for a while, anyway. And then this is the Power Rangers game on the Game Boy. Now, I've done zero research on this, as usual, but I'm pretty sure this was already the other, whatever the Power Rangers game was, whatever Power Rangers came from in Japan. So it's just that game, but then they changed some of the graphics to make it like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers here in the US. I don't know, either way, it's actually a pretty decent game. It might be worth checking out for you. Did you also grab Mortal Kombat 3 for the Game Boy, just cause? Well, I mean, maybe your cool uncle gifted it to you or something like that. Just like, oh, here's Mortal Kombat. Don't tell your mom. Well, I don't know. It was it was, nice, nice try on a Mortal Kombat game for Game Boy. It was the same year we also got Killer Instinct on the Game Boy. Here's the thing, though. Killer Instinct on the Game Boy, believe it or not, actually plays pretty decently. So given the option of the two, I'd go with Killer Instinct, even though I'm not the biggest Killer Instinct fan. But it's it's it's... You know, it's actually kind of playable. 97 rolls around and Tetris Plus could have been under your tree. We finally get a Tetris Plus. Now we've already had Tetris, came out with the console. Now we have Tetris 2, which was decent. I liked Tetris 2. And then Tetris Plus kind of brings it back to what Tetris was with a twist, with a fun thing that you can do in this one that you couldn't do in the other ones, which I really enjoyed. So you have your Tetris, right? Basic, you can't go wrong. Here's your Tetris. To me, the fun part was the puzzle mode, and the puzzle mode, to me, the fun part was the puzzle mode, and the puzzle mode makes it so you're kind of an explorer on these Tetris blocks, and when you can go to the goal at the bottom of the stage, that's when you beat the level. So you have to, like, keep clearing these lines to uncover that so he can get down there. That's, I just thought it was a fun idea. 97 also brought us Donkey Kong Land 3. Uh, I don't think we needed even any of the Donkey Kong Land games. But it was a reason to have, well, you know, by this time, Super Nintendo was already out. They already had the Donkey Kong Country games. Why not have Donkey Kong Land? And it's not that they play terrible. They play all right. It was cool to see this. I will, I will give it this. It was cool to see this because you figure if it's on the Game Boy, it could have been on the NES. So to me, it was almost like these are what the Nintendo games could have looked like if they were still on the NES. So if we had like a Donkey Kong Country type game on NES, never mind the bootlegs, uh, it would have looked like this. Of course, 1998 for the Game Boy, uh, it was all about the Pokemon series. Red and Blue came out. Um, they came out like, a couple years earlier in Japan, but we finally get them here in the United States, 1998. Pokemon was already big with the cartoon and all that, so now, hey, let's, uh, let's give the cartridges um, in the hands of these people who still have these classic Game Boys. Usually at the end of a console's lifespan, there's usually a, like a couple of bangers and a whole lot of duds. And Game Boy went out smoking because it didn't really have a whole lot of duds. But man, it, like, when it was like, hey, you know what? We're just gonna do, uh, here's, here's Pokemon, that's what we're doing. If you're, if you're still playing Game Boy at this time, this is about all there is to choose from. <laughs> and you know what? I think it worked out pretty well. I, I worked out pretty well for him. 1998 was the release of the Game Boy Color. If you had a Game Boy Color, here's hoping that you also grabbed the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX, now in color, and there's like an extra dungeon in there as well too. It was nice to see like, you know, full color. I mean, the Super Game Boy attachment for the Super Nintendo and a little bit extra color, but this one made it like proper. The optimal way to play this game, I think. And the, the, the Switch version's good too, but I still like this one. The next year, 1999, well, we got what most people wanted was the Pokemon game 
it's still like Pokemon Red or Blue or whatever. This is the yellow version. This is the one where you basically just start with Pikachu. Because you watch the cartoon, you just want Pikachu anyway, right? So they realize, wait a minute, we can really capitalize on this Pikachu thing. And there you have it. So you can play uh, you can play Pokemon, but now you can have uh, Pikachu as your starter. Also in 99 here in the United States, Harvest Moon for the Game Boy. Now Harvest Moon was a favorite of many for the Super Nintendo. And now you can play Harvest Moon on the Game Boy. And this Game Boy Color version uh, worked out pretty well. It, it looked great, I thought. And, um, you know, it's more Harvest Moon for your Harvest Moon fix. Isn't that cool? That's for Game Boy Color, by the way. This is not the Super Nintendo. This is Game Boy Color. Year 2000 rolls around. We finally get just proper Donkey Kong Country on the Game Boy Color. And this just looks great for a Game Boy Color game. I know it doesn't look like the Super Nintendo version, but you gotta remember, this is like Game Boy Color. So Donkey Kong Country, I mean, it's, it's already been out for a couple years on the Super Nintendo, but now you can have it on Game Boy Color, just for fun. Later in the year, also got Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. I loved it when they started doing this because they realized not everyone was into the Pokemon game. Now, Pokemon was Pokemon and everyone, well, most people loved it. I didn't care for it. But you can still capitalize on the brand to do other things, too. Just like how Puyo Puyo on the Sega Genesis was Dr. Obama. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine or whatever. It's like, oh, people know who that is. We'll put a puzzle game on it. Well, they can do a puzzle game like this, put Pokemon on it, and even I'm like, oh, this is, never mind Pokemon, this is a fun puzzle game. And it's a super fun puzzle game. Now, they've had other puzzle games like this on other consoles, Super Nintendo, uh, or, uh, like, was it, uh, 64, you know, stuff like that, too. I think Super, it was Super Fam, not Super Famicom, not Super Nintendo, but was it? No, no, no. It was. Never mind. Something different, though. Anyway, where's it going with that? Oh yeah, this game's fun. I like that one. 2001. My goodness. We're already into 2001 now. Lufia, The Legend Returns. They had a Lufia game on the Game Boy Color, and it plays like a great Lufia game. If you're into Lufia, perfect thing to grab for 2001. Even had Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Now, Pro Skater 3 was on a lot of different consoles, but even on the Game Boy Color. And the Game Boy Color played a little bit more linear. It's more of a a back-and-forth thing, not a huge warehouse to explore. It's kind of do what you can when you're going back and forth, but... I mean, to some people, that's all they had. 2002 rolls around, we have the Hamtaro game. I loved Hamtaro. <laughs> so chances were good if you're rocking a Game Boy Color and, you know, you're into Hamtaro and stuff like that, maybe you grabbed Hamtaro. I hope you did for the Game Boy Color back in 2002. 2003 rolls around, it was all about the Game Boy Advance at that point, but we're just talking about Game Boy and Game Boy Color in this video. And while we're here... You make sure you check out the other videos too. I did this on Genesis, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, the games that you could have received for Christmas under the tree. And oh, would you look at that, my very own copy of Quest Arrest, available now on your classic Game Boy. It's actually been available for the last couple of years, but still, 